Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where we find the coolest LEGO builds that people have been making throughout the week and we show them off and talk to you guys about them. If you want your own builds to show up in next week's episode, you can check out the description below where we've got an email. And also linked in the description below are the Flickr accounts for all of the people that we feature in today's episode. So anyways, here's the very first build. This first build here is a spaceship called the SFC Titan by Andreas Lin and it has a pretty distinct shape and style with the three different layers of wings and the uh, red and white and dark gray color combination kind of streaking along the edges is really kind of a fun look. Plus the repurposed use of that X-Wing windscreen is a pretty nice touch. Now this next build here is a series of Shiba Inus done by Xiao Chao, but really this is kind of the next dog in a sequence of different dog builds currently on Lego Ideas. Some really, really fun styles. I think they're super cute. The designer really has found a wonderful scale to show off some great details. I highly recommend you go check out this guy's Flickr. He's got a ton of really, really cool stuff, and I personally only just recently discovered him. Now, this next build is the first time I've seen a really, really good Optimus Prime that isn't uh, just existing in a LEGO digital designer file. This is an actually built, very large-scale Optimus Prime. I don't believe he's got the ability to transform, but it's an awesome-looking build. This is by the designer Anakin Skywalker 2012. Often the ambitious designers in digital will usually make this guy out of parts that don't exist in real colors for particular shapes, but that is obviously not the case here. And he looks like he's got a, a decent amount of posability. You can see that he does have a stand where he needs to lean back, and that would just be the case for a type of brick-built figure that you have here. He's very top-heavy, and if you want the joints to have any type of dynamic motion. Yeah, I would guess that maybe he isn't the most stable of builds, but he really does look awesome. Now this next designer, Logie Bear, does something that not a lot of designers attempt to do because it is just so darn difficult to do well, and that is capture a cartoony looking character as accurately as possible. So you can see Donkey Kong here has, uh, it's just a whole combination of different pieces flipped upside down and put in different positions. And throughout this sort of chaos of Bionicle, Technic, system system bricks and even some banana pieces for eyebrows, we get a very accurate and really sort of recognizable version of Donkey Kong. If you guys like this particular type of build, I'm sure you're gonna really enjoy the rest of his flicker because this is not the only video game character or cartoon character that this guy has attempted. And personally, I would say this is an extremely difficult style of building and he does it extremely well. Now the next build up here is from Intert, the same designer that has done the Naboo Star Fighter currently up in our Lego web store. And this guy really is on another level of Lego design, especially when it comes to spaceships. The amount of detail involved with this kind of stuff is just absolutely insane. And Ryder's U-Wing seems like a perfect build for this guy to actually take on. As you can see, it is a sort of minimalist or sort of broken down U-Wing, broken down to its sort of bare bones. The front wings of the U-Wing have been sort of lopped off. You can see the internal structure of what those wings looked like. The top canopy has been completely rusted away with the paint. It's totally gray. Two of the engines are straight up gone and the U-Wing looks like it is working at its minimum operational weight and it makes it a lot easier for getting this ship in and out of tight spaces as quickly and efficiently as possible. Now for a ship that is a bit more clean cut, we've got the Y-18R Ragnarok Starfighter by Swaystar. And this, I don't know if it's intentional, but it does look like it is built to possibly exist within the Star Wars universe. Certainly the pilot looks like he could fit inside an X-Wing or a Y-Wing, no problem. It looks more like a Y-Wing than the Y-Wing does, if you look at it from the side. We've got a wonderful combination of slope pieces that make up the cockpit as well as sort of that jointed part of the middle body. It's not so much small greebling that looks quite detailed, but a combination of sort of riveted metal sheets and plates that mix and match in the center that kind of give off that fun mechanical detailing that I think is a little bit unique. You usually don't see quite as much slope detailing turning in on itself at different angles with uh, the stud orientation changing quite sharply. The color highlights work quite well. I like that we've got some nice vibrant colors. Sand green juxtaposes really well with the yellow, but there isn't too much of it on the ship, which I feel would be more of a realistic or it just feels more of a grounded kind of look for this ship to exist, which is also one of the 
the reasons why I think it would fit pretty well within the Star Wars universe. Now for the next build, I often sort of skip over construction style builds. I know there's some amazing Lego mock designers that exclusively build uh, these types of vehicles, and maybe it's my own personal preference, but they just don't get featured that often in our top 10 section, but this is just so amazing, I could not possibly skip over it. We have the Marion 204M Superfront by Beat Felber. I don't know the size or scale of this particular mock, but you can see it is absolutely massive, definitely above a minifig scale. We have some really fun design choices. I like the tiles that have been put onto the treads. In fact, everything here has been tiled over. It really does look amazing. That build for the back canopy is awesome. And when you have it scaled next to this giant dump truck, I know this isn't technically the featured build for this guy, at least not for this week, but just look at how he widened the width of those rubber wheels. That's just so nuts. It's awesome. Anyways, I uh, highly recommend you check out this guy's flicker. There's a lot of really fun builds here. And I believe I featured Mark Robler maybe a couple weeks ago, but I just can't help myself. His next build that came out here is the best version I have seen so far of Han's blaster. Specifically, this is the DL-44 heavy blaster pistol. This was actually modeled after a real World War II pistol, the actual movie model was. And here included are some great details. I think we get the best shape for that front muzzle out of any other Lego build I've seen so far. It really does look like the way it would from the film. And the riveted handle also feels just a little bit better than maybe uh, other attempts I've seen at this pistol from other designs before. All I'm thinking about now is how to attach the trigger pull to maybe a glowing red light brick in the front. This is an amazing mock, and I don't know why, but I always like to put the more nature-y scenes towards the end of the video. I feel like for some reason I always think they're higher up on my list, but this is called Swampy Water by Sebastian Baczerzewski, and here we have a wonderful build for the actual Swampy Water, as this is titled. You can see it's a combination between the dark transparent and the very vibrant, almost puke green, but it really is a good color for that bright algae that you do see resting on the top of Swamp Water. There's tons of fun details here. I think the shack looks great. There's a lot of fun colors used to even show off the different kind of rust and decay that you see. And I don't know, it just feels like a really fun scene to kind of get lost in. But if you want to get lost in a build, this next one might be for you. This is the All-Star Precinct Arena by Brick Knight. Now, technically, the All-Star Precinct Arena is just one of the structures, the largest structure that you can see in this much larger build. And what we have on the inside is uh, Disney on Ice. I've never actually been to one of these shows, and I don't know, it's not really like my thing, but the build quality and the dedication to this mock is absolutely undeniable. Not only is the arena building itself a really, really well-made structure, lots of fun details on the outside, but the inside, of course, is completely fleshed out with a full stadium, and of course, Brick Knight has made a bunch of different scenes for each of the Disney on Ice sort of sections of the show. I think it looks great in both a scene setting, sort of an atmosphere, and the quality and dedication to the building techniques used. There's a lot of fun things to notice. I highly recommend you check out this guy's Flickr. Check out everybody's Flickr linked in the description below. I've also linked a ton more of other cool builds that never actually made it into this episode. And now it is time for the top 10 mocks, sorry, the fan mocks of the week. So if you do wanna send in pictures for next week's episode, please check out the description below as well. There are links to all of that stuff. And without further ado, these are the fan mocks of the week.
Oh, hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to pop in really quick and say that we do have a web store, BrickVault.toys, uh, that sell instructions for super high quality mocks uh, that are built by incredibly talented designers. So that is the first link in the description below. And also there's other videos too. We've got other things if you wanna watch that. All right, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time at BrickVault.